Hello and welcome back to the studio. I am so excited to dive into this blushing phantom butterfly tutorial. Now if you saw the thumbnail you know kind of the look that we're going for, um, but this is a semi-transparent butterfly so I knew I needed to have a very detailed sketch beforehand but I can't let that be too dark or else the pencil lines will show through so I'm just lightening it with a white eraser real quick. I'll have my reference photo linked down below if you need help with the drawing process. Now for this tutorial, I'm going to be working in a wet to wet technique, which basically means that I'm going to wet the area I'm going to paint before I start adding pigment, and then the pigment that I add will also be wet. Um, generally, I prefer a dry, or a wet to dry, so where I'm taking wet paint and putting it on a dry uh, surface. Um, but in this case, I really want to have a nice, very soft and very even color placement. So I want there to be gradient, but I don't want it to be too obvious. Now the trick to doing that is actually to put water down, but not to let it puddle. So you see there's a puddle in the upper right hand corner. I don't want that. And you can see there's a little bit towards the base. I also don't want parts of it to be wet and parts of it to be dry, like here on the left. I really want it to be as even as possible. All right, now it's time to add the pigment. Now I have a full video on the mixing process behind this painting where I go through a little bit of my color theory as well as just like what paints I used and how much of each and just kind of talk you through that whole process. I'll have that video linked down below if you're interested, but until then, all you need to know is I'm using a light brown. I'm taking this brown and I'm just adding it in very small amounts to the edge of the butterfly. And then if I want more pigment, like here at the kind of at the center, I'm just tapping it in. Now because the wing is section is already wet, that will create this beautiful bleed and you can see that it worked. Now that that's dry, I'm going to do the same thing to the bottom half. Um, the two bottom wings, I'm going to do that as well. I did get a little impatient while I was waiting for the upper two wings to dry and so I worked a little bit on the body. And you can see here in a moment it's going to kind of bleed into my painting right about there. Um, so not ideal, not really what I would have liked to happen, but it's okay because I was actually using the same brown um, concoction, cocktail, whatever you want to call it. The same colors that I used to mix the lighter brown, I used to mix the darker brown. So it actually won't cause any problems, but it was not ideal and I probably should have waited until um, that had completely dried. But I'm doing the same idea, same technique. I'm taking that light brown and I'm taking it to the edge and I'm just helping to create this more transparent look, but I still want there, it to look like there is substance there. I want it to look like there is a wing there, even if it is, again, semi-transparent, which if you haven't seen photos of this butterfly, like in the wild, it's so beautiful. It just looks like this hot pink color and the eyes are just kind of floating above the butterfly's body. So I'm, while the paint is, or the, while the water is still wet on this wing, I'm adding in this pink paint. Um, so it's nice and bright and I'm just kind of adding in very strategically because I do want it to be super saturated in some sections, but I want it to bleed very nicely. I want there to, I don't want there to be harsh edges. I want it to be nice and soft. So again, that's why this wet to wet technique is ideal over the wet to dry. And you'll see that I'll kind of just keep building up this color. So I'll just keep tapping it in. I'll take some paint, put it on my brush, make sure that there's a little bit of moisture on there so that it transfers and flows well. And just tapping it to areas that I think are getting a little too light. Especially if your paper bubbles a little bit, this can be a really important step. Now to clean areas, I just take my brush, still damp, but I wipe it off on a um, towel and I just kind of scoop See how I'm just scooping that paint up? I'm just picking it up and clearing the areas that I don't want to be too saturated. And while the paper is at this ideal point where it's kind of like that perfect in-between of wet and dry, I can continue to manipulate it so that it looks exactly the way that I want it to. Um, so I'm just kind of tapping some color in here and then kind of going back. And if I need to remove paper, um, some pigment that has bled too much um, or kind of seeped into different areas, then I will do that. So continuing to look back at my reference photo and make sure that the color is going exactly where I need it to go. All right, now that both sides are in and dry, I'm gonna start working on the body. Now if you've 
watched any of my butterfly tutorials, you've probably seen me do this. I really prefer to kind of put a base layer of my pigment in and then kind of working from the outside to create that modeling. And modeling is just a fancy word that means three-dimensional. Um, and so it's just kind of how we make things look a little more lifelike and a little more um, three-dimensional, like it's kind of popping off of the page. You don't need to do that as much with wings because they are more two-dimensional, um, but I do want to make sure that with their body it looks nice and round. It looks like there's, you know, like a heart beating under there, like there's um, life flowing through that little body. So after this initial layer, you'll notice that I'll start to focus um, on the exterior of the body. So see here, I'm just tapping more of that pigment in and so that it will kind of bleed, continuing to kind of work with that wet to wet process. Um, so I'm working on tapping it in and avoiding the center as much as possible. Now the center will have a little bit of what we call a highlight, which will allow it to have more of that three dimensional look that I was talking about. I went even, it looks like I even went in and I dried my brush off so there wasn't any pigment or a lot of water on it. and just kind of picked up some of the pigment that had become too saturated for my liking. Now with that same pigment, I'm going to add it to the eyes of the wings. So they have this beautiful effect that looks like eyes, and I'm assuming that that is to deter predators. Um, although why you would have a hot pink color on your wings if you were afraid of predators, I don't know. Um, I guess I need to do more research on these butterflies to see it. just a little bit more about them. Um, but they have these beautiful um, eyes basically on their wings and they're very bold and they're very bright and so I'm using this really dark color. I'm going in with not a lot of water because I want it to be super saturated paint and that's just so that I don't have to kind of go over it with multiple layers because it is so saturated in my reference photo. It doesn't have that three-dimensional effect that I was going for with the body. And we've got both of those eyes done, and now it's time to move on. I'm going to keep adding to the body and just making sure that I'm tapping in extra pigment. Even though it's dried, tapping on the side will kind of create a more fuzzy texture, which is something that this butterfly, at least my, in my reference photo, it appears to have. Now that that is all dry, I'm going to go in with my number six round. For this piece, I'm using a number eight for kind of that first section. A number six for most of it, to be honest, because number six is probably my favorite. And I did use a number four a little bit, but I don't really like my number four brush. I think I got kind of a wonky one. So I'll be using a number two for some of the finer veins that we'll be illustrating later. And all I'm doing here is I'm taking that same light brown that we've been using throughout this whole painting, um, and taking a lot of it so it's nice and dark, and I'm really going around all of the wings, and I'll be doing this for each of the veins. Now, this is real time. This is how slow I'm going. I didn't slow this down at all. Um, this whole video is in real time. I've just cropped it a lot so that it doesn't take a million years, um, but I'm just working slowly around the edge of the butterfly. And then I'm going to go in and add the veins from there. You see, I'm taking my time, making sure it's getting nice and dark and building up where I want it to. Now for this section, I'm taking more water on my brush and less pigment so that I'm kind of able to create this nice gradient. So this is how I normally work, where it is wet to dry. So I have wet paint, not super wet, um, but the paper is dry. Now I'm just kind of pulling that pigment and kind of getting a little bit lighter and a little bit lighter. Um, but here I had a little bit of trouble. You see how that exterior section that my um, flat brush is rubbing against, that was a little bit too dark and thick for my liking. So I'm just using my brush to kind of make everything look a little bit more gentle and a little bit lighter. Um, and I used a much stiffer brush. I wouldn't want to do that with one of my nice watercolor brushes um, because it would damage the brush. Um, but that is the nice thing about having like a set of like acrylic brushes or more like a synthetic brush because it kind of helps to cover up mistakes like that. Um, I don't know, it's just a nice thing to have on hand and you don't have to put any pressure on your nice watercolor brushes. Now one thing I like doing when I'm working with butterflies and I have a lot of delicate details like this is I like to start with something that I can be a little bit bolder on. So I like to start with like the outside edge before I move into the interior details like this. And that gives my hand a chance to warm up because it doesn't matter as much if the exterior, the outline, 
is a little bit darker, um, but these interior lines that I want to be really light and delicate, I want to be a little bit warmed up. So I don't recommend starting and jumping into the interior lines. I always recommend when you're doing details, get a nice small brush. So this is a number two that I'm using, or a size two, not a number two. I'm talking about pencils and paint brushes here. Um, so this is a size two and I'm just working really lightly. But I'm able to do that because my hand is already warmed up. I've already been working with nice tiny lines. Now one thing that's changed in my style um, from when I originally started doing butterflies in watercolor is that instead of doing the whole line and then kind of massaging it to soften it, I don't paint the whole line. So I really darken up each edge so you can see I'm working really slowly. Again, this is real time, guys. This is how long it takes, but the effort is worth it. The result is always beautiful. So I'm starting, I'm really dark at the edge of the line, kind of where those corners are, where those line, two lines meet. And I'm really bringing it up and slowly allowing that color to build. Now on the interior of those lines, I don't want them to be dark. I want them to stay nice and light so that it kind of has more of an implied line look. It gives it a much more delicate effect and it's really something that I'm enjoying. Now if you want to see the other technique that I use. Most of my other butterfly videos follow that technique where I kind of put a line down or put a shape down and then I massage it with my brush in order to kind of soften it so it's not quite so harsh. I don't think that's a bad technique. I think I've just changed as I've grown as an artist and I think that's one of the best things about being an artist is that you're continuing to evolve in your style, in your technique, and in your skills. Now this work can get kind of tedious, especially because I'm going back and forth, taking some of the pigment off of my brush by just dabbing it on a towel and then kind of pulling in each direction. So I want the line to be nice and soft um, and not pigmented like I do want it to be on the outside. And so I'll kind of go back and forth between I'll add some pigment and I'll you know, dab some pigment off and I'll just kind of be going back and forth. So see, there's a little bit more pigment on my brush because I want this corner to be a little bit darker, have a little bit more of a pop. But then I will take pigment off of my brush and then kind of go back in. Or that time I probably put some on it because I'm going back to the outside. And then just going really slowly. I'm constantly looking back at my reference image for this to make sure that I'm on the right track. I never want to um, kind of get away from my reference image if I'm doing something more realistic like this, um, especially a more iconic butterfly like the blushing phantom or like um, the monarch butterfly or you know something like that. There's some butterflies that I feel like you could get away with it, um, but it is really important to, even as you're painting, even if you did a really detailed sketch, that you are looking back at your reference image. Now I'm just outlining the eye a little bit in order to give it that little bit more pop. See how that came alive compared to the right hand side? I'm slowly working my way around the butterfly. It is best to work um, from the opposite side of your dominant hand. So if you are left-handed, working from right to left, and if you are right-handed, working from left to right, um, and that just kind of helps to avoid getting your hands in the paint. I actually normally work from right to left, so it's not like one of those things that you're a terrible artist if you don't do it that way. But it can help to avoid some of the accidents that I've had where I've messed up my paint because my pinky was in it after I had just finished painting. So in this case, I actually did what I was supposed to do and I worked on the left hand side first before moving on to the right hand side. So the right hand side here is nice and dry. All right, now that those thicker lines are done, I'm going through, I'm adding some thinner lines. So this is mostly dirty water that I'm kind of pulling through and I'm still going back to my towel and dabbing it off. Whoops, that was much too thick. So going back to my towel, making sure my brush is nice and dry and I'm just kind of maneuvering that extra pigment away. I'm wiping it off with my finger and kind of massaging it. That will also help to kind of lift up some of that pigment. Um, so that's just kind of a mistake that can be easily fixed, thankfully. Um, but I really just wanted you to know I'm adding these finer lines in. And if you get too dark, you can just kind of dab at it. All right, now we're having some fun. Originally, I was thinking that I would be adding pops of a purple tone. And so I mixed a beautiful purple tone in our color mixing video. But I 
when I was starting to paint it, it didn't feel right. I felt like a lemon yellow highlight would be better. And so in the center here, you can see that I added a little bit of that lemon yellow. I'm doing the same thing to this brown section to make it look a little bit brighter and a little bit warmer. It just got a little too dull and was disappearing. Um, and I didn't want it to do that. I wanted it to look brown, but look like a nice, warm, saturated brown. So I need a little bit of that lemon yellow there. Not only ties in that highlight that I added to the bottom um, wing. There we go. I keep wanting to say leaf. I'm so used to working with flowers. It tied in the yellow that I added to the bottom wing, um, but it also, you know, like kind of warms it up and gives it that light. I'm doing the same thing here where I'm adding a little bit of that yellow. I did try and add a little bit of purple and I just didn't like it. So I took it out and I'm doing the yellow again. We will use the purple though, don't you worry. So this is just something that I love to do. It's kind of my signature to add in a little bit of a color that is not really there. So here we're adding that little bit of purple and that just adds a little bit of depth and dimension and just kind of some visual interest to these veins here that we went through all of the trouble of painting, kind of adding a little bit of an unexpected color um, that fits with the composition but isn't necessarily in you know, the reference. Um, so it's not completely out of left field. I'm not going in here adding a neon green. This is a color that was used to create this palette. However, it has a little bit of a pop, a little bit of visual interest, and is a little more interesting than, like, say, using the brown again. So I did that with the yellow as well as the purple here. So I'm doing the same thing on some of these interior areas. It just kind of gives it a little bit of a pop, um, kind of giving... I don't know, it's just a little something extra that I like to add to my paintings. You'll see, if you've been following my tutorials for a while, you'll see that I like to do that with pretty much everything, even if I don't necessarily point it out. Um, a lot of people will be like, I never would have thought to use purple on this or to use pink on this, but it's something that I love to do. And so I'm adding it here as well. Now that that pink is nice and dry, um, it won't kind of take away from it. It will just kind of add the pigment on top as long as I am careful. Now that I've added my pops of purple, I'm going back in with barely any brown on my brush. I'm starting to add some of the um, visually interesting elements of these wings. They have kind of these, I don't even know, they're almost like birthmarks or beauty marks or something. They're kind of like tiger stripes that are, go across the wing in kind of random areas. Now for this, I'm definitely following my reference image. I'm not really sure what they're for or what they signify, or it could, as far as I know, it could be a reflection of these wings because they're so transparent and almost plastic look. Um, so it might just be a reflection, but regardless, I'm going to include them and um, just kind of working one line at a time. So just like I drew my butterfly, and if you need help, I do have a tutorial for drawing a different butterfly, but I use the same technique and steps to draw this butterfly. And I'm just going one section at a time. So you'll see I'm joining two lines together and then I'll pause, check the reference image, and go back, and then pause and paint the next section. Didn't that just bring the whole thing to life? Now I did add a little bit of purple to that brown in order to give it a little bit of a dimension um, for the tiger stripes that we just painted. And there is the finished piece. So there's both sides completed. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and let me know down below. And until next time, happy painting.